everybody. This is Amazing Fantasy Football. I am Josh, and he is... I am Christopher. He is Chris, and he keeps calling himself Christopher for some reason, and it has always perplexed me for the last two weeks. <laughs> Wouldn't be always. Changing but anyways, how you doing today, Chris? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Looking forward Excellent. to an amazing show today. Excellent. See what I did there? See what I did there? Excellent. No, it's amazing. Yeah, I was ignoring it. Not excellent. Yeah, yep, I was, I was ignoring it. <laughs> this dad over here. Um, <laughs> all right, we, we are here to talk about some running backs today. We have done some rankings. We have our running back rankings. Um, and we're here to talk about some fantasy football, of course, because we are just a couple of guys that are really enthused about fantasy football. And you know what everyone is enthused about in, in fantasy football? Running backs. Yes, yes, very much so. Everyone loves running backs. What is it about the running back that everyone loves? Who knows? Uh, we'll never know. It's we'll never know. I know. It's it. it no, no, you don't. Um, <laughs> and philosophers will be will will be thinking about it in decades to come about what is a running back, and why do we love them so much? If a running back falls to the Jesus sixth. was a running back, and that's why everyone loves him. If a running back falls to the six and nobody is around to hear it. Did it actually fall? Did he actually fall? See what I did there? No, I'm just... <laughs> now I'm making him objects. Josh. All right. What's wrong with me? <laughs> so, like I said, we, we were here to talk about some running backs. We got some rankings on our running backs, and we're here to discuss our, our discrepancies in our... Not discrepancies, our differences in, in, our, in our running back rankings. Because Chris apparently hates A.J. Dillon, and I am mediocre on A.J. Dillon. And I don't mind Melvin Gordon. Chris has hated Melvin Gordon since the dawn of time. Kind of true. Even it's before true. Melvin Gordon was Melvin Gordon, Chris has hated him. Mm. Why? Because he slept with Chris's wife. <laughs> I forgot about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you did. It was it was specifically Gordon too. I forgot all about yeah, that. It was Melvin Gordon. He <laughs> he he slept with your wife. I really need to. Do the proper thing and forgive and forget, huh? Anyway, you really should. Right now, I mean, you've forg you right forgiven now, your wife. Right now, my hatred is baked into my rankings. It just definitely is. Just so, just so. All right. So normally, we, right now, we would talk about some news, but there really hasn't been a whole lot of news as of note. I mean, some defensive uh, players have gotten in trouble with the law for various reasons. Uh, apparently, Barcavius Mingo can go fly a kite, as my grandfather used to say. Well said. Um, allegedly go fly a kite and allegedly in trouble with the law. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anyways, well, definitely in trouble with the law, but for alleged things. Um, alleged horrible, horrible things. But we don't really have any uh, news to talk about as other than just, you know, beat writer fluff pieces about this player is so great and this player is not. That, yeah. Blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. We don't. We're not here to cover that. We're here to cover news and and facts and some speculation, and but not fluff speculation from beat writers. So, um, Chris, why don't you t why don't you kick us off with you? Why don't you give us your top twenty four guys just real quick here? RB one. I have uh, Chris McCaffrey, mm -hmm. number two. Dalvin Cook, Saquon yep. Barkley, mm -hmm. Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, Zeke. Jonathan Taylor at RB8. I have Aaron Jones at RB9. Eckler, Akers, and Gibson to round out the top 12. That's Antonio Gibson of the Washington football mm -hmm. team. At RB13, I have Joe Mixon, DeAndre Swift, J.K. Dobbins, Clyde Edwards, Allaire, Gaskin. Allaire. Miami. Yep, Gaskin is at RB17, Miami. Uh, yep. Najee, RB18. Chris Carson, Ooh. RB19. Josh Jacobs. David Montgomery, Raheem Mostert, Kareem Hunt, and Miles Sanders is my RB24. Okay. Okay. Um, I disagree with some of those, but that's okay. That's what we're here to talk about, though, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and my top 24 uh, starts off with Christian McCaffrey, then Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley, Derek Henry. And those are my top four, kind of if you wanted to reorganize them any way you want. Whatever. That's That's up to you. Uh, I got Nick Chubb at five, following uh, followed by Aaron Jones, and then Zeke, uh, Alvin Kamara at eight, Austin Eckler at nine, Cam Makers ten, Antonio Gibson at eleven, Clyde Edwards at number twelve, 
That's my top 12 there, starting with Jonathan Taylor at 13, and then Joe Mixon, J.K. Dobbins at 15, Chris Carson 16, DeAndre Swift 17, Miles Gaskin, Josh Jacobs, David Montgomery at 20, Kareem Hunt at 21, Zach Moss at 22. We'll be talking about you later, buddy. Uh, Mike Davis at 23, and the rookie Michael Carter for the New York Jets at, uh, rounding off my top 24. I like yeah, it. I, like I it. believe we're talking about Carter, too. Wait, wait, no, no, no. Okay, cool. Those are those are, those are our top 24s. Um, our top 12 is pretty kind of very similar. There's some big discrepancy of uh, t- difference. Um, <laughs> it is a better way to put it. You're right. It is a verbally better way to put it, but go ahead. <laughs> um, but Jonathan Taylor, I have outside my top twelve, just barely. I, I was I was a lot lower on him. We did a, an episode about him about that mm-hmm. a while back, mm-hmm. and once I started, a kind of, and some of, and Chris doesn't have my most recent rankings because I was tweaking him last night, but I did have him lower, and I I don't know, like it was just it was it became with Jonathan Taylor, like I'd rather have him over these guys. Some guys got lowered, and that pushed him up. You know, it was just, it, it's, I just these can't quite get fluid. him into that top 12. These yet. things are fluid. I, I th- these things are fluid. I think we want them to be less fluid by draft time. So August ish. Right. Um, but you know, this is your friendly neighborhood reminder that this is, you know, not even mid mid July and these things are fluid. So, uh, I'm right there with you in For terms sure. of, of, uh, the way you were looking at that. Yeah. Yeah, and and you know oh, their and rankings I, and their and I chose we, not we to didn't we didn't uh, because of that reason because we really hit home with him a, a few weeks ago four weeks ago whatever yeah exactly yeah, that's I why I, that's why we're not bringing it up either you can go Good back up two three weeks month. I forget <laughs> it's a blur <laughs> after our break in June right I think before uh, before might be before it I feels like know. before anyway <laughs> I have no idea I have no idea anymore. This is what happens when you get old, folks. You can't remember <laughs> when things happened. It either happened yesterday or last year. <laughs> Kudos. Kudos. All right. Okay. Well, who's the first guy you want to talk about, Chris? Uh, I'm going to kick off. Uh, speaking of Melvin Gordon and hatred, I'm going to start off with Javante Williams, his uh, backfield mate. The Denver, the Denver running back that did not sleep with your wife. Correct. So he's 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 already uh, off to a great start. Uh, in the <laughs> rankings I have from you, you have him at forty three. I believe you've raised a little bit on him. I have him at RB twenty six. That's pretty rich. I think I'm still probably a little below consensus, but I'm obviously uh, we mentioned this off air. I've got this right around where RB twenty four ends. Uh, slash begins I start taking more rookies I start taking some of these veteran starters that have mm, questionable situations but onward with Javante uh second round draft capital was invested in him and draft capital matters Mm -hmm. I don't really care what anybody says Gordon is an unrestricted free agent next year one could look at that from both point of views one could be like well they're going to start moving on and start deferring to Javante or hey we're just going to run him in the ground while we still have him here you know, and then we'll we'll defer to Javante in year two, if you will. But I would tend towards the uh, the former. Uh, Gordon has only surpassed 1,000 yards once in his career. Um, he's never been fast, and he's probably lost a step. 50 career catches for Williams while sharing time with Carter. That's career catches in college at North Carolina, of course. Uh, 6.3 rushing average for his career. 7.3 in 2020. Again, sharing time with Carter. Uh, it's great efficiency, in my opinion. Turned 21 years old in April uh, versus Gordon will be 29 when the season starts. Uh, I believe he takes reception and goal lines carries from Gordon. Uh, and when you do that to Gordon's kind of yearly numbers, he becomes a much uh, worse fantasy producer. Quarterback could be an issue. I'm sorry, say that again. Uh, if Gordon loses goal line carries and receptions to Javante uh, exponentially, Gordon becomes a worse fantasy back. I'm sorry. I heard that. I heard that backwards. Okay, cool. I think I got it the right the second time. <laughs> uh, quarterback could be oh, an issue. Okay. <laughs> that's definitely to be mentioned here. Uh, but I think that's baked into my ranking as of now. Uh, just outside the RB, RB2 range. I just touched on that a moment ago. Um, we'll see how that goes in camp. Uh, I have many rookies, and I've already touched on this too. I'm bringing rookies and questionable situations around this ranking area. I can see you liking Carter's situation a bit more, perhaps. 
I don't think Gordon is a non-factor. Let me be clear there. Just not a big enough factor to make me want to push Williams down at this point in July. I like him as a high-end RB3, low-end RB2 at this point. So that's my okay. two cents on Javante Williams. And, of course, I've got more on Gordon. <laughs> okay, so you hate you hate Melvin Gordon. I get it. He's, he's only passed a uh, 1,000 rushing yards once in his career. Here's his total scrimmage yards, over 800, over 1,400, over 1,500, over 1,300, not over 900, over 1,100. That's not bad. I don't, like, I mean, okay, fine, you're not rushing for 1,000 yards, but if your scrimmage yards are over 1,200, sign me up. So what I have to say, I'm going to just give my give my spiel about Javante Williams. And I think that what he has going on right now is very similar to what Melvin Gordon walked into the league as Melvin Gordon came into the, char- he was drafted by the chargers back in whenever the year is. Um, it was somebody, 2015 actually. Was somebody ahead of him? Is that what you're getting at? Danny uh, Woodhead was there. All right. And good point. okay. So, and Danny Woodhead was, you know, he might've been 30, but, and he was, he was a smaller back and he was definitely excelled in the receiving game, but he wasn't a terrible runner either. He was just small. So you had to kind of pick and choose where he used him. But so Melvin Gordon had some competition there and Melvin Gordon always gives a lot of credit to his success in the NFL to Danny Woodhead. And I can kind of see where this is go- and just follow me here. Mm-hmm. And Melvin mm-hmm. Gordon is, has also came out and said, he's like, I want to do to Javante Williams, what Danny Woodhead did for me, you know, that sort of thing. So here's what Melvin Gordon did in his rookie season. And this is why I'm, this is why I'm not, I'm not super on board with Javante Williams. 184 rushing attempts for 641 rushing yards. That's not a lot. And not a lot of receptions for only, I'm sorry, for 192 yards, 833 total scrimmage yards. And of course, as, as every, as people remember from, you know, six years ago, he didn't have any touchdowns in his rookie season. You know, that's always going to be the highlight of it and yada, yada. He seemed to make up for that in the coming years with borderline double. He definitely did. He definitely did. But I mean, so I'm looking like, and and I'm not going to say that Javante Williams is going to exactly replicate Melvin Gordon's rookie season, but I think that's going to be more of what, what happens here. And Melvin Gordon is going to be, and, and granted, like we said, like we said just a few minutes ago, this is all kind of before a lot of training camp news and everything like that is coming out. So as of right now, where I have Melvin Gordon is the lead back. He's going to get the majority of the touches. Right. I mean, from what I think honestly, at yeah, this is moment, what you believe him. And, and like, I, as of right now, if, if there's news that it's going to, it looks like it's going to switch to Williams and everything. I mean, I only got yeah, Gordon and, report, and Javon, yeah. I only have J- Gordon and Javante Williams about six spots away from each other. Yep. You know, yeah. like, I, I know you don't, I know you, you didn't get my most recent rankings because I was, was going to, I was keeping you in the dark on purpose. Well, you said uh, it, we've said it a couple of um, times on the show. So we're good. We're good. Mm hmm. I'm kind of there with you. I, I want to, and, ahead, and the sorry. reason why I have them different than you is just, I just want, I'm, I'm waiting for this news to come out, you know, like mm-hmm. what's going on. Cause, and I looked a couple days ago and it was, and we talked about this beforehand, but like one beat, rep, one reporter said, it's Javante Williams is going to be the lead back. And the other one's like, no, it's going to be Melvin Gordon is going to be the lead back. And the next guy was like, it's Javante Williams. The other guy's like, no, it's going to be Melvin Gordon. You know, like it was just speculation like speculation and conjecture for sure. in this time. Exactly. Of year. Mm-hmm. Until we uh, start here, until we start seeing some, you know, like pregame and, and, you know, hearing some more like grumblings coming out of camp and everything. You feel good. About I'm keeping it the way it is. And again, you have risen on him. Uh, three things I'd like to say, uh, and then perhaps, yeah, go for we, it. perhaps I or you can move on to uh, Gordon, since it's obviously related. Uh, I think it's a very, and I mean this in a very positive way, like it's an interesting angle that you're using Gordon's numbers as an indicator for what could end up being Javante's number, whereas I'm using Gordon's numbers, not just year one, a lot of career numbers, as an indicator of how I think he is a much less efficient player than Javante. Like, I just think it's an interesting 
argument that you're taking against mine because it's it's valid it's like i don't know i just thought it was a really appreciate that but angle. if you and and to use your argument against arguments. you if you look exactly. at you're if you look at melvin gordon's it. college stats like you're just rattling off william's stats they look amazing they're he was great in college you know That's like fair. but he was also college the, is a much different it's a much different ball game than he the was NFL. also the guy he was also the guy and his career was almost 10 years ago now eight no more like what? six or seven how many years is Gordon been in the league five seven eight uh, Melvin Gordon's college career was seven eight years ago right I feel like running backs translate easier that's neither here nor there I was just re replying to your point the last couple of things I wanted to say was um that I'm awesome yeah, I guess that was it I guess that was it the point on uh, Javante's yep, efficiency that I'm awesome. great yes. I think it's an indicator that it's actually the stat is an indicator that Javante will be more efficient and I didn't know that Gordon had said that and that's good for him good for him um as far as IRL and being a being a good NFL player, you know, like I have to. That means in real I life. I have to folks. rewind some of my hatred. Maybe maybe I have forgiven, for, for, forgiven and forgotten and moved on. <laughs> uh, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on to. <clears throat> hmm, who should we do next? Melvin let's Gordon. let's do. You know, I'm looking at his really carries that he he's put on the the miles he's put on his tires. I'm looking at the fact that his contract is is expiring uh, at the end you of this year. About that. Uh, he couldn't average more than four yards per carry till his fourth season, which non coincidentally was his lowest carries in a season. And of course, he only played twelve. You, you games. could you could you could argue though that that was offensive line or poor quarterback play i mean yards per carry think, doesn't I really tell you a good san story san diego fans would probably agree with you <laughs> they've always been a unlucky organization maybe is a good way to put it sure mm -hmm. you could throw that in there uh but you can always throw that in there with any player really uh, dissect their offensive line and their organizational the help that the organization gives him on the positive side of things man he had 10 touchdowns in 2020 12.2 fantasy points Gordon actually played well. Uh, no lie. He kind of surprised me. Um, I just think that maybe that clock is coming to an end uh, this season. You don't pick a running back with the third pick of the second round and then turn around and give Gordon the same workload. And if you believe Gordon loses work, you'd have to have Javante ranked higher, which unironically you have risen on Javante. So I think your 1A, 1B is coming closer together and uh, I feel differently. That's all. Who did you want to talk about next? Um, I wanted to talk about Najee Harris. This is another guy that we cross streams on. You mm -hmm. have him at 18. I've got him at 27. It is the difference between an RB2 and an RB3, you know? For sure. Uh, I, I mean, he looks like he's going to have that opportunity in Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin, you know, is pretty notorious for uh, using, outside of the last couple of years, really, uh, for using primarily just one back and giving one back the majority of the carries. Maybe not in this longer NFL season. We might not see that all that much. You know, he might be more like a 75%. And then those those other guys that are pretending to be running backs or get the other 25. But so, I mean, you know, like, yeah, there, there's, there's, that's good. That's good for Najee Harris. That's, that's really good for him. He scored, I don't know, like 27,000 touchdowns last year in college. Um, I think he scored every single Alabama touchdown last year. <laughs> every single one of them. Um, if he wasn't catching the ball, I mean, like he catches the ball really well, which is great. That really works out well for Big Ben. Big Ben is has utilized the his running backs as uh, as, as receiving options yep. and everything like that, and that's great. But here's the thing, and this is why I don't like Najee Harris. Last season, PFF ranked Pittsburgh's offensive line as 17th after the season got over with. Now moving forward, they have him ranked 29th. For those who are uh, counting at home, that's fourth to last. And and now they have a ranked 29th. That's not good. Mm -hmm. And as of earlier this week, um, Najee Harris's ADP was early fourth round. This is the only guy I actually looked at their ADP for some reason. I assume it's only right. And that's number, tw that's number 23 uh, coming off the board. I mean, it seems pretty reasonable to me. And, you know, I... I do have them a little bit lower than that, you know, than the ADP and everything. I, I, I get that. And, you know, like, I just, I think that offensive line is going to be really, really bad. And it's going to really affect their running back and Big Ben. I think it's going to affect the offense or the offense as a whole, as a, as a bad offensive line can do. And Najee Harris is good enough that he can overcome that a little bit. But to, for you to have him at 18... Man, I I'm sorry. I'm out of I'm out on him at 18 with with that. 
Uh, so do you do you think they did nothing to address the offensive line? Or no, they you, did. Do you and PFF feel that they did nothing? Because that seems how. Well, to be fair to your ranking, that's not really how, what your ranking says. It's it's risen some, and it's you know I guess getting better uh, from depending on your perspective. PFF to me seems a little a little low. I can't deny that they finished the year horribly. I can't deny that they lost. Uh, it was a Villanueva, I believe, is his name. And and Pouncey. Right. Um, before I go on this um, kind of down this rabbit hole of uh, of what they did do, um, I would also like to say that I think most people nowadays would agree that the best way to build a franchise, build a roster, is through the draft. Free agency is means you're always overpaying. Yes, you can get production, especially when you're in that Super Bowl window or whatever. You're not, but, you're not necessarily overpaying in free agency, but I get what I get your point. I'm just saying that you're not necessarily. I still vehemently believe that the draft is the best way to build a franchise. So here's some of the things that they did. It, um, it's a combination of both, but go ahead. It is, but I think it leans heavily in favor of the draft. Yeah, yeah go keep going, keep going. I would argue that the Steelers line is uh, better with their draft picks. Uh, they got their. They're, they're Heath Miller no. and Fryermuth out of, uh, I think it's Penn State. Uh, that's second-round draft capital. He's the best blocking tight end in the entire draft. And I bet he comes in and is probably better than a lot of veterans and pros already starting in the league at run blocking. Mm -hmm. He will clear the way on the edge and has the athleticism to get to the next level. They invested a third-round pick in Kendrick oh, Green. Insane. That's a center guard uh, you know, combo, whatever you want to call him, from uh, University of Illinois. It's a four-star recruit. Fighting Illini ranked 35th in, rank, in rushing in 2020 with a 4.8 average. Fourth round pick, Dan Moore, offensive tackle, three-star recruit. Uh, second team. But their star AC. recruits doesn't ma doesn't matter how good or bad they were in college. That just means what they were going it does into when the college. Draft is the best way to rebuild an offensive line, or the draft is the best way to stop. You could your be roster. a five-star recruit going into college and end up being a seventh round pick because you weren't very good. And these guys weren't seven round picks. They uh, also weren't first round picks either. So that's because they spent it on Najee Harris, the guy we're talking about, who's a first. They round, weren't. They weren't quote, graded first as first round, round picks either. Well, none of them are past like twenty usually. I can't help where the Pittsburgh Steelers pick. Uh, fourth round, Dan Moore, offensive tackle, was a three star recruit, second team, All ACC, twenty twenty. Once again, uh, that doesn't played, matter what star recruit he was. He played against SEC edge rushers his entire career. I mean, come on. Uh, the Aggie online was a finalist for the Joe Moore Award. Also added offensive tackle Joe Haig. Started, this is a free agency. Uh, started three games for the Bucks and didn't give up a sack for whatever that's worth. Villanueva ranked 32nd PFF coming into 2021. So addition by subtraction. So it's not like they didn't address the O-line and run blocking at all. I have faith in Tom and, and his staff. What's that? I'm not saying they didn't. Right. I was more arguing against PFF's paltry ranking than I am your overall ranking, because I did say it raised a little before I started this. I have faith in Tomlin that his staff uh, and his staff to turn around this run game in a year, and obviously the volume is going to be there for Najee. The one caveat is how one feel about one feels about Ben's arm. I think he was hurt all last year, so I think he'll be better. Somebody could say, well, you can't throw downfield, so maybe dump it off to the tight end and the running back. I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying you have to take that into account, uh, Ben's health or whatnot. And, running backs and, are the and most... The, and the thing, mm -hmm. the, the, the thing to say about Najee Harris, too, is that like he's he's got a huge catch radius because he's got these like, like he's a he's a really big back he's like a with big he's hands. like a, mm -hmm. a a slightly smaller derrick henry you know like Fair. he's mm -hmm. huge mm -hmm. um and i think they, they both played at alabama for sure yeah 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 um, i mean there's that um i mean like i like Najee harris i really do i just don't think that there's a there's 26 guys i like better than him and i think you're I a I, th I think you're looking at the wrong things when you're looking at their offensive line. <laughs> you can't look at star recruits and say that that's why that's why they're good. These are literally the dudes they drafted to hopefully take the place of these other guys. They also made a couple of veteran additions. It's what you do, like you said. It's a mix. You you bring in some sometimes cheap free agent talent if you're bargain basement hunting, like some teams do. I'm not saying Steelers do. I'm just saying the two free agents I mentioned were little consequence i would think the rookies are more consequence do they make the starting lineup i can't answer that it's july however they did what they could to address it and then you can't you can't discount Fryermuth. i know tight ends and this guy in terms of fantasy isn't going to be sexy i get it 
but I think he has a fantasy impact in terms of how he can help turn this run run attack around. And they want to run the ball. Part of the reason why tight ends aren't aren't that aren't that good in their rookie season, and it's not just for fantasy, but it's also their inability to catch up uh, blocking assignments. And the, you said that Friar Muth was the greatest at. blocking tight end in the draft. He wasn't. It was uh, Tommy Tremble. Oh well, Friar Muth was ranked very very highly, and maybe it was a different. I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that statement. Right. I'm just saying, and, that and, and I I believe that he ranked. comes into the league being better blocker than a lot of vets that are currently starting on teams. Some some well, teams, even you can easily say that about like your Noah fans because I was going to say some, some teams do skew more heavy receiving tight end. Uh, the last couple things I was saying about Najee himself, not necessarily the situation. You're probably going to this is going to be a relatively moot point, but I want people to know this oh, in go terms for it, man. of what he can do. Uh, running backs are the most pro ready position, uh, and improve that beyond a shadow of a doubt for the better part of ten years. Harris comes in with 638 carries and 80 catches i'm really impressed by that shows he's an every down back and we all know the steelers mm -hmm. and tomlin like to use one guy okay who's the next guy you want to talk about sir zach moss okay well, let's move on to zach moss then let's see here i like this player um i just feel like you're a little high on him kind of like a drafting him at his ceiling kind of thing last i looked i think he was at 21 for you i think he's come down a slight bit um, he's at 22 okay um, situation is still a little murky slash kind of a bad situation. Uh, bills were 20th in rushing yards. You know, we kind of harp, hyped, harped on the Steelers, uh, and their inability to run okay. the ball. They were 32nd, uh, for, for context. Buffalo, uh, was 20th, but Josh Allen had 421 of those yards. If you take those away, which I understand that's not what you do. I mean, it's not like the, Ben didn't get any rushing yards. I'm just saying, if you take think, away the... I think, I think, I don't, I'm not, I think for me in this, sorry to interrupt you here, mm -hmm. but I think the, the, not the, so much his total rushing yards is more as of his 102 rushing attempts is the thing that needs, that I want to go down for Josh Allen. A, for his as safety. As a negative or but, as a... Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Well, no, just listen, just hear me out. Okay. I want those to go down, A, for Josh Allen's safety, but also to... To give a, a more of a workload to these um, running backs here, not only Zach Moss but Devin Singletary. Devin Singletary is not going away, folks. Outside of injury, they they don't really have anyone. The the Bills that is, they don't really have anyone behind Moss and Singletary. So it's going to be these two guys. I just think that no, I'm sorry to kind slot. of hijack your spiel. It's okay, you're good. We're only seven um, slots apart too. Go ahead. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. But I mean, like, I I just feel like Devin Singletary. Like, yeah, he has higher yards per carry or yards per attempt, you know, than mm -hmm. uh, Zach Moss did last season. Cause I mean, Zach only played in, you know, the one season as he was, he's going into a sophomore year, but I think that the bills are going to try and have a more balanced uh, uh, offense, a, to keep Josh Allen from, you know, saving Josh Allen from um, himself rushing. And, <laughs> you know, if, if he rushes less then hopefully he'll, he'll check down, Maybe not, maybe not to the running backs, but he will check down a little bit more, and that could that could actually help his running backs. And I think that Zach Moss is gonna be that guy. Like I just don't think I watched Devin Singletary. I'm just not impressed. Whereas mm -hmm. I, I and that and that's why I'm like, okay, well, Zach Moss, you got to be better than this guy right here. Right? You know? mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I didn't see a lot of Moss on on you know film this past season because he was in he missed a few games from injury mm -hmm. and then they were still kind of running with Devin Singletary and I think Frank Gore was still there too if memory serves correct last year yeah I think so sure I can't remember there was someone else there was someone else there that that was kind of eaten into mm -hmm. Moss's carries and then this as year well they've got uh Brita Matt Brita so yeah I think that all. I think that that is a point though I think that Brita is better than Singletary no, then I'm really, I forgot all about Matt Breida. Depends on what role we're talking about, but I do think we're obviously talking about two role players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I just, I don't know, man. Like, what, what do you have to say? And I'll just jump in here. Um, so my point with this Bills ranking and where they finished 20th in rushing yards last year, and if you take uh, Allen's yards right out of that, their 1,302 rushing yards puts them in last place, <laughs> not the Steelers. Uh, Moss, Moss led the uh, led in red zone percentage uh, that was 35.4 inside the 20 35.7 percent inside the 10 33.3 .3 inside mm -hmm. the five 
So there's that in his favor, but we both know where a lot of those other red zone attempts uh, went, don't we? Uh, your QB2, my QB3, Josh Allen. And of course, the receptions heavily weigh in Singletary's favor. So you mean to tell me a guy in RB2 territory, where you currently have him, that will lose goal line carries to his quarterback and receptions to his backup running back, which, by the way, Singletary is still listed as a starter. I don't know, man. It just seems like a lot of, uh, you know, I don't know. I, I can't budge yet if I until I know more about Singletary taking a back seat. And I do feel the same way you do about the talent players, and I do hope Moss gets this. I just think that seven spots in our difference in rankings is because of these reasons I mentioned where I still worry about Josh Allen taking red zone touchdowns and uh, Singletary taking catches. And, you know, I don't know, maybe the defense is better and there's less literal attempts for the offense too. That's kind of where I'm at. And the the last thing I'll say to in the interest of keeping the show moving is that with Moss, I, some of his ranking is it's a, le- a little leap of faith, you know, like mm-hmm. that by the by the end of all this preseason stuff and everything, he will be the top guy in that backfield. He will get the most. I kind of he will so be too. the most utilized running back and everything. I, really do. I mean, just, you know, I'm like you're you ha- you have to you have to admit that your Najee Harris that 18 oh, has sure. to be a little bit of a leap of faith yep. as well. Yep. So yep. you know, Those are two good examples. Absolutely, I, I came across that yep. in my notes with a couple of guys where it was like, okay, well, he feels this way about Zach, where I feel this way about Najee, etc. And, et cetera, and, and et I mean, you know, the 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 quote unquote professionals that that do this too, <sighs> like they <sighs> definitely do that when they do rankings too. Oh, like, for sure. I believe that this is guy is going to be the the top running back or the top wide receiver or you know whatever mm-hmm. or the top court. You know, like it's it's. So there's that. That's that is a good deal of him being at 22, also, and it's also had 66. It's also it's also college, the beginning so of it. July too. So yeah, exactly. You know. Moss also had 66 it's, catches in college, so I like him, man. I think he can do it. I just I worry they won't let him. A.J. Dillon. Mr. A.J. Dillon, the Green Bay Packers running back. Also known as, do you know what his nickname is? Um, All Day Dillon. <laughs> Quadzilla. <laughs> he is a bit of a <laughs> bit of a thick boy, isn't he? Yeah, he's got some tree trunks for yeah. legs. Oh, my yeah. God. So I have A.J. Dillon at 33, which I actually wanted to get him higher. I was just having a hard time getting him above RB33 at the moment. You have him at 47. Yeah. <laughs> and so here, here's my thing about A.J. Dillon. I know Aaron Jones is still there and all that, but Jamal Williams is gone, and that's it. I'm just going to take what Jamal Williams has done and give it to A.J. Dillon, and then I'm going to th- light a match and throw it right, and AJ. watch the rest of it now, burn down. A.J. Dillon is not much of a receiver. Javon, uh, Javon, um, <laughs> Jamal is, is quite, Jamal Williams is quite quite a the receiving back he's he can do it all, i man. know i i, I know that, I, was, that was all a that joke was man. that was all a joke I, um i got you so i was i was gonna say like so this is i think this is the exact scenario of why the packers drafted aj Dillon. they knew that a combination of aaron and or aaron jones and or jamal williams was going to leave this year in free agency i mm-hmm. i think they were going to try and keep one of them and the other one that stayed is going to be you know whatever now I don't necessarily agree with them taking a AJ Dillon in the second round the yeah. not in the 2020 draft, but this is why they did it. They knew they were losing at least one of their running backs yep. in this this past off season, mm-hmm. so they were they were doing a little forward thinking. I get it, but and AJ Dillon didn't really get a lot of didn't really get a lot of work last season. He was injured. Uh, he missed five games due to injury, and he missed another. Well, he didn't really miss him, but he had another five games where he saw next to no work. He did see one game with excellent, with heavy usage, and that was in uh, week. I'm sorry, week 16 versus a bad Titans rushing defense. But do you know what he did in that um, in that week right there? He went off. Yeah, he looked good doing it too. Like it, I mean, like I said, the Titans run defense at that point of last season was. Pretty darn bad, but um, oh, he's also called the Quad Father too. I love that. <laughs> shout <laughs> shout out to the Pod Father, <laughs> Quad Father. I know. Anyways, um, yeah, he. I mean, he went he went off against the Titans, and you know, like like I said, bad bad defense, cool, but at least he can do it. 
And he's not Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams is a big guy, actually. I didn't realize he was six foot tall. Um, the same height as AJ Dillon. Then two plus, um, like you know, two fifteen or something, right? Jamal uh, Williams, yeah. AJ Dillon is is a, AJ Dillon is just a real big back. Oh, for sure. And no, so he's not gonna bigger. he's not gonna quite. Top of he's and he, like you said, he doesn't catch the ball as well as Jamal Williams. And I get that. That that's not what the Packers want him for. They want him to be a bruiser, and they want. I think they want him to be the thunder to Aaron Jones' lightning. Because mm-hmm. I mean, Aaron Jones at times. Um, in the in his past couple of years, has sometimes, 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 only sometimes, struggled in short yarded situations, you know, mm-hmm. and insert AJ Dillon into those, and maybe even some other ones. And I think by the end of the year, he'll be right around, you know, the the top of an RB three, you know, mm-hmm. and, you know. I, I mean, I, I just think it's I think it's a good name to keep in mind when you're doing a draft. And you're sitting there, and you're looking at your RB4 or RB5 that you're looking at. And I think you could do a lot worse than A.J. Dillon. And you, you think you can't, according to your <laughs> rankings. <laughs> and according to you, you can't. Um, I think this is a perfect tie-in to my last guy, if you're more or less done with A.J. Dillon, in that I want to mention that the similarities in A.J. Dillon and Tony Pollard um, – Oh, real quick, one last thing I want to mention. There's another guy they took. Forgive me, I don't remember which round. Uh, Jarrett Dokes. Um, he's more of the Jamal Williams do-it-all guy. Real real good at receiving. Um, so he's somebody to keep an eye on on a deeper dive. I digress. So the similarities in Pollard and A.J. Dillon, I see. Uh, to be fair, on my uh, A.J. Dillon, I'm sorry, yeah, my A.J. Dillon rank, he's kind of there, but just by default. Like, I could probably rise on him several spots because I agree with you in that him and Pollard are great guys to take a chance on because of volume and situation. Furthermore, I think I, your I think your AJ Dillon uh, ranking kind of hinges on him having some uh, standalone value, right? Mm-hmm. Not just a Jones injury. And I couldn't. And I'm yes. hoping that I'm hoping that for Pollard. Uh, and we saw a little bit of it last year, towards the end of the year. Um, uh, folks, he's transitioning. He's trying to shoe, shoehorn a Cowboys talk into my AJ Dillon thing. No, no, he's transitioning to. to I am, Pollard, I am. What he's doing. So I think it's a great example of where I could co- raise, definitely rise on an AJ Dillon because he needs to be in that, for lack of a better term, RB dart throw territory, right? You're like you said, RB four, RB five. Your last guy you're taking, right? Probably in a redraft. What? No. No. Or, okay. Are RB5. you only taking four running backs? Can I be in a league with you? More leagues with you? If you're okay, only taking drafting four running backs, that okay, means R- more for me. Okay, RB five or six type of territory. Um, so um, I, yeah, I think I think you hit the nail on the head with just yeah. to kind of cap off AJ Dillon is that mm-hmm. like he I think he can have standalone value yeah. in the sense that like he could be a nice bi week fill in and in this in the right situation. I mean, I'm I'm a hoping that by bi weeks roll by the time bi weeks roll around, you'll kind of know. What AJ Dillon is like, whether you, you can rely on him to use him, attempts, like to your point mm-hmm. about goal line. Mm-hmm. And I mean, he's. I don't like drafting handcuffs, but he is a good handcuff to maybe if he's sitting there on the waiver wire at some point during the regular season to maybe snatch up in case Aaron Jones he's, does get injured. And Aaron Jones is notorious for missing sh- a game or two every year. I don't have his ADP off him, but yeah, you're. I kind of think you're right. Is AJ Dillon should probably be on that of the best handcuffs to take the Tony Pollard, the, the, the Jamal Williams, uh, uh, in, uh, Detroit. I think, uh, I think Jamal Williams has a lot more standalone value than AJ Dillon. I know okay. we don't have him ranked that way, but I think he has a lot more standalone value. Than uh, maybe throw Dillon. Gus Edwards in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Naeem Hines, or, you know, Ronald Jones, James Conner, that sort of thing. Or Giovanni Bernard. No, no. Okay, you want to transition into that? Now go ahead. No, real quick. Do, do real your quick. Tony Pollard thing real quick. I, I, real quick. Let's do Pollard. We're all about transitions today. Um, So uh, it's not much. I just kind of hit that nail on the head there with uh, the value of these RB dart throws. These guys that are in great situations. Dallas offense versus Green Bay offense. Probably both top five. Uh, need I remind uh, folks at home that Pollard played, played both wide receiver and running back in college. Like switched, then switched back. Oddly enough, he had more carries as an RB than a receiver. <laughs> anyway, he left college with 941 rushing yards, 104 catches, and 1,300 receiving yards while playing alongside Antonio Gibson, another oh. RB slash wide receiver freak. Uh, Pollard ranks 21st in PFF's 
the 32 best running backs entering the 2021 season. I think that's, I know PFF is a tool and you take it with a grain of salt, but I think that's pretty significant that they feel good enough about him to put him at 21. Um, per PFF, Pollard is tied with Nick Chubb, a favorite of yours, for the best broken tackle rate in the league since he was drafted and tied with Derrick mm-hmm. Henry for best yards after carry. I'm sorry. Best yards after contact per carry, 4.0 is that statistic. All the news I, coming I out of that. Dallas. I hate that stat, but go ahead. Uh, all the news coming out of Dallas. Because is, contact, I'm like, I could just touch him and be like, oh, I made contact. They're trying with to say him. he's got great balance and strength. Like I know. Um, okay, so uh, let me let me ask you this. Let me, let all me, the news me... out of Dallas is the O line is he- as healthy as they've been all year. That's all I'd say. That was the last note. Go ahead. Oh, okay. So I was going to ask you, and this is going to be more of a your your opinion sort of thing, and I'll weigh in on my opinion. Uh, so do you think Tony Pollard is going to have some, his own standalone value? Like maybe you can count on him for eight or eight, not that that's a lot of value, but like eight, 10 points per game. And yeah, you, so you think it's going to be like yeah. a, maybe not a 50, 50 split, but like a, like oh, a two to one split with, with Zeke. Like 66, 33 type of thing. A third. That would be a two to one split. Yeah. Um, yes, uh, in particular in a full PPR. Um, my Zeke ranking is pretty high also, so maybe I'm speaking out of both sides of my mouth, but, um, I think you are. I think Pollard's taken a step this year. Um, if you speak out of both sides of your mouth, aren't you just speaking normal? <laughs> no, because the middle is closed. <laughs> <laughs> just like that well done uh no i mean like you said this is opinion this is con- speculation <laughs> conjecture on one hand we're, we're, we're speculating that aj dylan is going to have standalone value and is one of the better handcuffs because if or anything were to ever happen to jones and we're speculating the exact same or at least i'm speculating the exact same thing about pollard so yeah i, I do think yeah he has standalone okay value. i think it's gonna be the zeke show again AD and 20. tony pollard is just gonna get sprinkled in there What's that? An 80-20 type of thing. 75-25. Uh, uh, 75-25. That, that's my personal opinion. I just wanted to throw it out there real quick. That's all. And as a fan, I, ho- say- I hope Zeke can be more efficient given less opportunity. Does that make sense? Some of these backs, I, yep, yep. you know, I know what you're saying. Way. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. I'm good. Um, our next, I'm going to group for our last, are we on our last one? I think so. I think I'm done. You think you're done? Okay. Yeah, because I tied in. Um, so our last running back that we're going to talk about is actually a group of running backs because Chris apparently hit his head or something. Um, and he has Giovanni Bernard, or, or as we like to call him, the stash, because he has one excellent mustache. He has him at 38. I have him at 57. Picture. <laughs> he's got he's got Lenny Leonard Fournette at 41. I have him at 24. All the, that might be a little high, but, you know. And then he's got Ronald Jones at 45, and I have him at 36. I I really don't understand your Giovanni Bernard at all. I know you don't like Leonard Fournette. I don't think he's that talented either. I I know, but I just like – I watched what the Bucs did with him down the stretch last year, like in the last like three or four regular season games and then throughout the playoffs and into the Super Bowl, and Leonard Fournette more or less – they didn't win him the Super Bowl, but he was definitely a contributing factor in that Super Bowl win. Mm-hmm. Um, Absolutely, uh, people and, argued and like, he should have like, gotten MVP. And, and Ronald itself. Jones wasn't. What's that? People argued he should have gotten MVP in the Super Bowl itself. Um, and yeah, uh, exactly. I, I know. It. I know. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that. But um, I, I and I know this is gonna be a hot mess of a backfield, and that's why I'm like. That's why I'm thinking maybe I have I have Fournette a little too high because I don't know if I will really want him in that RB two territory. But I just I know I know what Giovanni Bernard is, and it's not that good of a running back. He's a good pass catcher. He can't run. He can't run the ball rather well. And and I know you're about to say, well, that's why I really want him. I want him as a receiving back and blah blah blah. But I just think that this entire situation is kind of a mess. And I think that Bruce Arians hates running backs. I think he hates fantasy football players. And I think he hates you the most. <laughs> Bruce, um, I How'd you think, do it, Bruce? <laughs> I think there's gonna be some factors contributing to them being a little more pass oriented than 
they would like, or should I say than Bruce would like? Although Bruce loves to throw the ball. Um, like, I think the defense is going to take I, a step back. That's why I think because, he hates running backs. I think because, he's just like, I'd rather just throw the ball all the time. Right. I think the defense might take a step back because there's really kind of nowhere else to go but but, but down. <laughs> Pretty damn good. I, I think you're absolutely right. So that could lead to some more throwing. Uh, yeah, a little more catching up. I'm not saying they're going to be a bad football team. I'm not saying they'll be playing catch up all the time. I'm just saying it leads to a few more opportunities. A lot of those opportunities might be on the the running back that is on the field gets stuck on the field because there's a little more hurry up being run. Also, Brady came in last year trying to in, trying to mesh his and Arian's offense, which was really probably more like 70% Brady's offense. I don't know that for a fact, but I'm just saying they might be more comfortable sitting back picking teams apart with a short passing game. So I just kind of defer to the guy I believe is number one cheaper, number two going to get more receptions. Um, I think they had no intention of making Fournette that kind of de facto receiving back. I think Jones has shown. But he only had like 30 some receptions last year. But I think he got a big chunk of them at the end of the year, and in particularly in the playoff run in the Super Bowl. Like he became their guy. I think Jones was hurt. Maybe I don't. I don't recall exactly. No, but, I think uh, Bruce Harris just hates Ronald Jones. I, I think he got you yeah, right. Uh, you know, and he just doesn't show receiving chops. Jones doesn't. Um, I would push back a little bit on Gio, greatest, no. Gio being a untalented player as much as maybe it's Cincinnati's fault. Um, maybe that's an excuse. But uh, so that's where I'm at. I want the cheaper guy. I want the guy I think is going to get stuck on the field in your kind of hurry ups and your spread him out, hurry up offense kind of situations where Brady's just, you know, Giovanni mm. is his James White, I guess, uh, for lack of a better way to put it. And I could definitely see me raising probably on Ronald Jones, yeah. So that he, he probably takes a lot of rushing work, and and if I really believe that Leonard's going to go bye bye, then I should probably raise on Jones, and that's just by. I didn't I got get a quick to question it, I guess. for you, and, and this is this is a major digression here because this <laughs> ad just popped up on on my website. But oh boy. why why do people still buy graphing calculators? This thing is there. there it's, it's on sale for one hundred and thirty dollars. I could get an app on my phone that does the exact same thing for free, probably. Probably that's what I mean, you know like with ads or whatever you use in like uh, geometry and algebra those things with formulas calculus, and... but yeah oh calculus yeah Craig and calculus here's my head and here's me it going way over my head never had one never needed one <laughs> didn't what, take really stuff. nope yeah I didn't take calculus nope oh. and it wasn't too good at algebra and geometry to be quite honest ha ha drink mm. I went most of the show I think I said it once earlier. It's okay. I'm just, I'm like, I'm like for $130, you want me to buy a graphing calculator? That is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, I know they were, I know they were, that's roughly about they, what they were when I was in school, but like, just get the app on your phone. Yep. Never going to need one. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Okay. I got, we got one more running back I want to talk about real quick. And this is just more of a spiel than anything where, um, I, and that's Clyde Edwards Alaire. You have met. 16 i have him at 12 not a big deal mm -hmm. it's a difference but there is an rb1 versus rb2 difference here for sure um but here's what i want to bring up i want to it's, it's more of like a highlight on like and a thing of don't be scared to draft ceh sort of thing did you know that ceh i, I already told you this so you know but mm -hmm. but did you know that ch ended up with 1100 scrimmage yards last season that's not too bad that's not too bad um i and i feel like Ceh is like the like why people are kind of ignoring him or downplaying what he could be this season is because I don't understand why, but everyone was all on the hype train for him last season, and he was going like, do you remember that he was going like the middle of the first round last year? Yeah, I think it's a matter of it expectations. Absolutely right. insane, mm -hmm. and I and like it was just like, well, insert Andy Reid, you know, slash Chiefs running back, and it becomes you know like an RB one. I'm like. That's not necessarily true. Those five and the Chiefs' offensive hurt. line got banged up as the season long. Like they got the Chiefs' offensive line got more and more injured as the season went along, and everything. Mm -hmm. But Ch ended up with twelve point two half PPR points per game. Yep, that's exactly what I'm looking. I know at. it's a lot of P's what, and points and everything. What, and he only played in thirteen games. What finish what? did that give him? Just outside RB one or inside RB one? I can't. I'm not seeing on this page. I don't know, but it, uh, so, but if you take his points per game and 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 give him sixteen games because he missed three games, um, he becomes he becomes RB twelve. Now that's not why I ranked him at RB twelve, 
But I think he can actually do better than that because the Chiefs have retooled their offensive line a little bit, and they they showed that they, that Super Bowl showed that they had to yeah. do something to yeah. with it. And it. so they did that, and now PFF has them ranked number seven going into the 2021 season. Yeah, like we we always do that caveat of PFF one. is a tool and not an end all be all. But you know to have them be at number seven. You know, like that's going to really help Ceh. He has another year of experience under his, or he has a year of experience under his belt to, you know, kind of grow and improve upon what he did last year. Orlando, I Brown, don't think he's going to be. I don't think. Got. I think he'll have some problems around the goal line. He might not score a lot of touchdowns because he is a smaller back. But I think that there's room for him to grow, and for and at, at I think for him to be at my number twelve RB says that too. You know, um... I'm. This or that, real quick, and I think I know the answer. What's up? J, uh, J.K. Dobbins or Alaire? Alaire. By three spots. RB1 versus high end RB2 for uh, Dobbins. Ouch. Yeah, and I, I, I think I almost have Dobbins too high, to be honest. And I'm there I, with you with Dobbins. I'm kind of on your, the train. We, with have, you there. You have the, we have them at the exact same rank, yeah, and I'm just yeah. like, I just. No, you make I a good point I, with Alaire. I think I think I'm kind of jumping on board of your thing of like Gus Edwards is gonna not mm-hmm. he's he's not going away. Or and and so. and uh, uh Lamar is gonna steal touchdowns and doesn't like to dump the ball off, et cetera. Potentially. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, well see and, we and that's a, that's a and that's a knock against, you know, Ravens running backs, Bills running backs, is that usually mm-hmm. uh mobile quarterbacks do not check the ball down so much. Yep. They yep. just they I'll run the ball down. instead. They're not statues. They don't. They don't have to get rid of the ball. They can run. They can run away from defenders. You know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, yeah. I gotta say, I I was so people don't know this, but I was at your house last weekend, and I can't. This past week, I just keep thinking about that fireworks show, and I was I really liked it. Good. They do a good job. Yeah, well, that and like because you're on the very outskirts of the Chicago suburbs and everything, there's all these small little towns connected to yours, and it's just like 360 of fireworks. Yep, yep. You know, going off and within it was super cool. Know, Twenty minutes or so of each other. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Cool. Yeah, I mean, it was. It was. You know, some of them were up, like way off in the distance, but you know, mm-hmm. like it was. You know, more or less hey, a I, 45 minute fireworks show. I'll tell you this much about my community: they uh they do spring and summer right. You know, like generally, like there's a gap pandemic interrupted some things last year but there's all kinds of festivals and stuff going on there's a big festival and father's day weekend they postponed it is there September. a pie festival yes that was a lie <laughs> i don't know i really don't know there's a farmer's market <laughs> with pie on week but that's weekend. not a pie fest you know it's not i don't i want to see some pie eating competitions i want to see some pies that i didn't even know exist I you know, can't like, help but think of that scene from Stand By Me when it comes to pie eating contests. I knew exactly. I knew so you were I just about can't it. do it. <laughs> can't do it. Uh, oh, I, man, what's your favorite kind past. of pie? Um, I'm more of a cake guy, but to answer your question, pie is cheesecake a pie or a cake? It's a cake, right? So I'm going to go shh, apple pie. It's technically a pie, I think. I thought I would, okay, if it's a pie, it's, it's cheesecake above all else running away with it of course it is because cheesecake's freaking delicious it no is. but outside of cheesecake i probably go apple pie i feel underwhelmed about yeah. by that answer but that's yeah you know what my favorite kind of pie is then this is a cheat but uh it's oatmeal pie it is so good hmm. it's so so good it is so it is. sweet I mean, like it'll give you diabetes if you eat a, if you eat a slice of pie? it but... Diab- diabetes pie <laughs> <laughs> Good old I'd like to eat some diabetes pie. <laughs> Thank you very much. Call me an ambulance. Oh, America, um, stop eating no, but, so but much. The, like, <laughs> as far as fruit or whatever goes, pumpkin. Pumpkin's the greatest. So oh, I forgot about pumpkin pie. I do like me some pumpkin pie. Ooh. My mom makes the best pumpkin Past pie. Past couple of years, because... I've been a bit of a pumpkin pie kick. At Thanksgiving? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's tied. It is seasonal for me. To or, or you just like you, or do you just be like, no, I just feel like some pumpkin pie, and you buy it at the um, store. You're pumpkin like, it's, pie, it's pie off the shelf with some whipped cream thrown on top. Mm, it's pretty darn good. Oh, you don't need no whipped cream on that. <sighs> it's good. It's good. Too. Pumpkin cheesecake. All right, so that has been amazing. <laughs> uh, that has been amazing pie talk. Um, Soon in next next week, week for we'll, next week we will be talking cake. about <laughs> cake. Um, <rings>. cake. <laughs> 
<laughs> what are we talking about? Cake. Um, my Obviously, cake cheesecake is... is the 101. <laughs> yeah, yes. Did you? Okay, so this is a real thing that they've been doing, like putting cheesecake on top of pies. So, like, there'll be like pumpkin pie and right, then I cheesecake know. on top of Diabetes it. Diabetes pie. <laughs> And then, and then they like they'll, and but then you only get a like a real sliver of a slice because you know you might die from that much sugar consumption. Um, it's a real thing. Anyways, uh, so next week we're going to talk about we're going to talk about wide receivers, receivers, maybe on some time candy bars, week. maybe some on cake. Time next week, you know? we didn't apologize for being late. I forgot. It's okay. Yeah, and and next week the show will be out. We'll have a show in like four or five days or something like that. Um, yeah, it'll be a. Real life got real life got in the way of the show, but it was it was important real life for a good stuff, reason. So. For a good reason, we hope we hope for very a good good reason. reasons. Yep. Yes, um, we do. Otherwise, Anyways. I don't know what. Like, share, subscribe, I, guys. You're we're about to hit the uh, regular you. season before Thank you know you. it. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. And and once regular season starts, we'll be doing um, player ratings through. Uh, that will be our normal show and and matchups and everything and. You know, that sort of thing. And if you are watching in YouTube format, you can check us out wherever the podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. Um, you can even check out Leonard behind your local Burger King. And he, okay. if that's how you get your podcast, we encourage you not to, but eh, whatever. Um, if you're listening to us in podcast format, you can check us out on YouTube format where you can see Chris and I and be like, man, these guys just need to like wear some makeup or something. Oh, terrible. Hey, pretty. Anyways. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us even on the Ukrainian dark web. But uh, we let us know what you think. Really about the advise new you look. don't go there if you're looking at over uh, YouTube. Let us know what you think about the new look. Yeah, Chris. Uh, Chris worked hard and gave us a nice, fresh new look, and I like it. I don't. I hope he does. He made it. Um, <laughs> I do. Um, I yeah, cool. So until next time, everyone, have a goodbye. Adios.